Hey, it's Glenn from Alder Spring Ranch in May, Idaho, in the middle of the central Idaho Rocky Mountains. And we're a little smoky right now because we're surrounded by forest fires, but not down here on the river. And this is the river that runs through it. It's the river that runs through Alder Spring Ranch. It's called the Pasimurai River. Pasimurai is said to mean the land of tall grass. And thankfully for us, even in a drought year, even in a forest fire year, the Pasimurai and Alder Spring Ranch in the middle of it is still a land of pretty tall grass. So we feel exceptionally blessed to be able to live here. I'm gonna take you on an exciting virtual ranch tour across Alder Spring Ranch in celebration of the Soil Health Summit. And I'm gonna do something a little different with this tour. I'm gonna to take you through a virtual ranch tour underground, yep, underground. Because the capital on which I stand the equity base on which I stand is that which has made our ranch profitable. After 29 years, it's the soil capital that has changed the complete game for us. And I wanna share that with you and I wanna tell you how you can do it at home. Anyway, come with me. So what I'm gonna do is an infiltration test and it's basically, a test to see how permeable your soil is to moisture. And the more permeable, the better. So, um, and it's because permeability, infiltration, is directly correlated to the amount of organic matter and basically the soil biology that you have. If you have a high amount of soil biota, you have a whole bunch of pore space, your soil can always take more water. And that's a beautiful thing because we're irrigators, so we like to use our water as efficiently as possible. If you're in a rainfall area, um, there's an old joke that I would hear among farmers and ranchers, and it's taken on brand new meaning now. You know, it'd be, I'd hear two people talk at the coffee shop, and one guy would say to the other, hey, how much rain did you get? And the other one would say, oh, I got about X amount of inches. But now the cool thing to say, if you're in regenerative agriculture, is to say, I got every drop. And that means you had no runoff. It all went into the ground. And that's a huge deal for taking care of soil biology. So I'm gonna do an infiltration test here just to see, get a pulse on how much water my ground can actually take and how fast it can go in. And we'll talk about it a little bit after I do the test. This is, we're coming into, I guess our fourth rotation on this grass. You can see there's just a lot of thickness to here. The weight of the grass is actually folding it over. And um, I'm gonna compare this, today's August 17, and I'm gonna compare this to another piece of ground, uh, another ranch that we just started organic practice on, just started a, an adaptive grazing practice on just this year. And um, we, <laughs> we're able to graze it for the first time starting this week. This has been grazed four times already through the course of the year. The random plot generator. This is a soil infiltration test, okay? And what it does is it just measures how much uh, infiltration the soil has. And what that means is how fast water goes into the soil. And the standardized testing method is to use a six inch ring. This is made out of very light well casing that I just cut myself and just put on a sawzall, some saran wrap, a graduated cylinder water bottle that has graduations on it with 444 milliliters of water in it. And you just, uh, it's a very simple little test. And it's kind of, it's actually beautifully elegant. So all you do is you spread your saran wrap over your little piece of well casing. Careful that it doesn't rip. And uh, rip it off the box, set it into the bottom. I've pounded my well casing in about two to three inches. Now I need a stopwatch. And you know, every phone on your clock function has a little stopwatch. So we get it ready to go. We pour our 444 cc's of water into the saran wrap carefully so it doesn't spill over. 
and it is in there. And we hit start on our stopwatch and we carefully pull the saran wrap out, make sure it all goes in. And we're measuring time now and the water is gone. In nine seconds, it's completely in the soil. And you can see um, our sward is very, very green here. It's not dry um, at all and dried out and droughty. Um, it's been a while since you, we've run a pivot over this, probably several days. And just in case we have an anomaly here, I thought what we'd do anyway is run another one real quick and just uh, kind of see if that soil will take another inch of rainfall in a matter of seconds rather than minutes. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, 17 seconds on test number two. So, you know, we've just had the equivalent of two very quick rainstorms, each bearing an inch of rain. It absorbed the water on this very, you know, grassy, very lush looking piece of ground here. <laughs> very, very quickly. Okay, boom, we're done. Stop. Okay, that was 40 seconds. So you can see we're definitely increasing, but that's okay. 40 seconds is still a wonderful time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see why that soil was able to take on all that wonderful water. Pop it out and we'll see what, what is going on down there. And what is going on is we don't have dirt, folks, we have soil. And remember, this is volcanic ash. It's almost bentonite, bent, bentonitic clay, extremely clay soil. And you can see there's still a lot of macropore space in there. You're seeing a lot of glomulin caused gl uh, clumping, which is an indicative of mycorrhizal presence in the soil. Fungal, fungal presence is, uh, it's a very clear sign that you have um, higher forms of life using the soil. You know, that means there's not only bacteria, but fungi, protozoa, um, all kinds of arthropods, worms, and all those cool things living in this soil because it's very clumpy and has tons of airspace remaining to receive water. Now, let's go right next to it here and dig a tiny little hole in the area not affected by my water and look in case you thought the ground was super dry i still can make a ball out of this clay soil and it was able to take three inches of rain in just about a minute of time and what is this telling you it's telling us that we have abundant soil life here and we have resilience even in the face of drought Worst drought year on record for this county uh, since uh, 127 years. We still have very green pastures, despite the fact that we're not seeing any rainfall and our irrigation is minimal. Okay, off to the next stop, I think. So here we are on this newly rented ranch we're running. This particular plot of land was irrigated um, the same time difference as the last piece we just did on Alder Spring headquarters that had those pretty good soil infiltration rates. So we'll do it again right here on this rental place. Uh, been subjected to continuous grazing for um, probably 100 years. You know, this, it is August 17. This has not been grazed yet this year. This is all the growth we got. I just showed you a piece that is now so thick that we have a trouble walking through it and you definitely can't see soil. Here I can see bare soil everywhere. So the exciting thing about places like this is that we have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> Thank you.
315 on the first pour. Go. Cool. Okay, now we might as well go get a beer. We'll turn this place into an organic matter powerhouse. It just takes time, but we need them to do it. They're the workers here. There's 435 willing workers there and they will change. They will single-handedly change this landscape. So I will say too that rest periods are so critical. What we find is in the drier rainfall areas of our range where it's seven inches of precip, rest, air, rest periods go as much as 2.5 years. We'll graze a given meter in about probably 10 minutes over 2.5 years time, give it 2.5 years rest again, come back for another 10 minutes. I mean, that sounds insane, but it's actually what's really happening. On a place like this, and we're gonna get 40 inches of rainfall on here using irrigation, we'll be able to get this down to about a 30 day rest. We'll be able to get this to regenerate to that standard just because we've added water. But places where we don't have water, we find that we need much longer rest periods and much shorter duration, much higher intensity. And that's why we do it all on horseback on the range. And that's why we can do it with polywire here because the duration of grazing is longer, the rest periods are shorter because we've added water. Okay, so we just finished infiltration number two. This one was 12 minutes and 28 seconds. We did a third one on Alder Spring headquarters. It took 42 seconds to get the one inch of water on the same column as those other two. Are we gonna try a third one here? No, because we don't have enough time in the day. So what I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna dig a hole here and we're gonna take a look and see what the soil looks like underground as compared to what we had on Alder Spring. There we go. Now, you can see tremendous differences already right here. It's just a soil cannonball, okay? Back on headquarters, we had uh, just tons of pore space. And here, we just basically got a piece of fudge chocolate cake. There's a little bit of aggregation here on some pear roots, see that? That's a really nice effect right there. So there's hope, we already have life in here. We just don't have what we had on the other ranch. You can see this soil is also lighter. It's because it's volcanic ash uh, foundation is showing through and there's not a ton of organic matter. Most of the color in this soil right now is coming because I just soaked it. I'll show you what it looks like without soaking. See, soil's a lot lighter and just a lot of dusty crumble, not much holding together. When I shake the roots, they come clean. And guess what we have here? We have quack grass roots. And how do I know that? Because they're sweet when you taste them. It's too bad quack grass didn't figure out to put more sugar in the stem, put it all down in the roots. But anyway, that's the difference. That's the difference of regenerative grazing versus continuous. And it's just all underground. And what's manifested above ground is basically a story of what's underground. Continuous grazing is currently desertifying the western half of the United States. And it's because it kills soil and creates dirt. If you want to create dirt and expose it to nature, continuously graze, you will do it. You will first create a monoculture and eventually you'll kill all the plants. Because continuous grazing is soil extractive. It's not soil building, it's soil extractive. The only way to fix these things is to mimic nature. And once again, nature never continuously grazed. It travels in large herds across vast landscapes. And that's exactly what we have to mimic, even on small landscapes of one to two acres. Just mimic cattle movement by nature. As you probably know, grass-fed beef is the foundation of Alder Spring Ranch. We've been raising grass-fed organic beef, oh, now going on for about 28 years. So this was where we started. 
was with cattle, and it's what we're the best at. We're still learning with the pigs, we're still experimenting, we're still learning with the sheep, and we're even still learning with the cattle. And it's just the way it is. Because you learn to work with your best employees. These are our star employees on the ranch. They do all the work of harvesting, along with the pigs, along with the sheep, along with even horses. They all work together to harvest what the sun and the soils have produced. And it's so easy. I just want to stress to people that learning how to do this is so easy and it's so low capital expensive. It, we just bought hot wire when we started. We bought a few rolls of hot wire, bought a few plastic electric fence reels at the hardware store that were used for electric extension cords. And we just bought a few cheap fence chargers and some fiberglass posts and we were rolling. We we're grazing and we we're producing grass-fed beef and we we're improving our soils and we we're improving our soils exponentially without first even realizing it. Now the soils I'm kneeling on here test around 7.3 percent organic matter. They started out at 1.9 percent organic matter just 10 years ago but now 10 years later we're in the sevens and it's awesome because we see a ton of diversity. We see a ton of regeneration. We see a ton of biomass produce, which now has allowed us to double our stocking capacity and double our grass production over what happened 10 years ago. It's all because we started to give the ground a rest and we started to use high intensity, very short duration grazing with just that little piece of polywire on fiberglass posts. And it's changed our world. And it's changed the world underneath my feet. And it's changed the world above the ground. And it's changed the world, most of all, for the cattle who graze it and thrive on it. And we do it with these guys, the pigs. You can see what they've done in front of me here. They've kind of uprooted all this. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, they've destroyed your pasture. But it's with good intent because they're after this. This little gem is a quackgrass root. And quackgrass, as you probably know, is a huge increaser. And with previous management before we got this ranch, there were vast areas covered with it. Now we turn the pigs out on it and they actually like the sugary sweetness of the quackgrass roots and do this where quackgrass has dominated. And now they've become our friends, our partners in crime in rejuvenating pastures and regenerating this landscape. We'll move these pigs about every two or three days. A lot of people say, well, I don't have the infrastructure to do that. But the infrastructure to start doing it with pigs is so, so simple. It starts with this right here, this white piece of twine that's polywire. It's electric fence. And it's such a wonderful invention. And I could teach even a five-year-old to put this in. It's just strung between fiberglass posts and it's a single wire and it keeps them in and keeps them safe from predators when they're small. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a very elegant piece of technology because it's so simple to use. And it's the foundation of life on Alder Spring. We don't have farm equipment. We don't have big mowing machines. We don't have big tractors. We have polywire and people to put it out there. And we're rewarded with excellent regenerative returns on the ground, excellent regenerative returns for the wildlife around us, and excellent regenerative returns for the food we produce. If you're running animals, embrace polywire. Don't worry about barbed wire fences. Don't worry about woven wire. Don't worry about high tensile. Just get the basic fiberglass post. I can show you in a little video I'll put on Instagram about how to tie the magical knot that stays in place as soon as you have it tense. And also, it's very easy to slide up. I'm not going to touch it because there's about 8,000 volts running through that right now. But this is so easy to slide up and get off the post and so easy to wrap on with that one magical little knot. You don't need clips. You don't need those stupid plastic <laughs> insulators. You don't need T-posts, that ground out electric wire. This is a non-conductive insulator in itself and it's so easy. You can carry them in bundles or golf bags or burlap sacks, whatever you want. Anyway, we just pound these in, in the ground and every 50 feet or so we put one of these in, string poly wire between them. Guess what? When we need a gate, we just cut the poly wire and tie it back together with these very simple little square knots. <laughs> this is so easy. And we just string the poly wire out. You want the nine stainless steel strands in your poly wire because it's going to be great conductivity 
And then here we got another one of these magical knots that you can just slide it up. It's so easy. And the last employee I want to introduce you to are these horses. Now a lot of them just call them weed eaters or range maggots or pasture maggots or whatever, or hay burners, all those kind of things. Well, they are, they can be that because they do eat a lot. But we have a partnership with all these. These are actually probably our most valuable employees on the ranch because we live on their backs for a lot of the summer on the high ranges when we're not grazing here at headquarters. We have about 46,000 acres certified organic ground that we herd our cattle on and we use them. So of course we got to take care of them too. And for a lot of people, there's no good pasture hacks for horses. But when we observe them, we can learn from them. For instance, we learned from them that quackgrass had sweet roots. Carol, my wife and I started watching these horses dig up quackgrass one day. And we said, what are they going after? And we went down there to look at their diggings and pulled up quackgrass roots and tasted them and found out they were sweet as sugar. And that's why we actually do the pig operation. But horses are very smart. They can be very selective in grazing. And we find that we can too get regenerative results if we move them hard and fast so they don't have time to be selective. Their nutritional needs are gonna be met with some selection, but not continuous selection. And as a result, they too are regenerative force. I want to leave you with a bottom line. You know, you might wonder what's happening during our weather here. I'm wondering too, because actually it's fire Armageddon going on right now. We have a pretty warm wind. We have a lot of wind, as you can see by the grass waving. It's blowing on wildfires all around us. We're kind of surrounded with wildfire this year. It's been the driest year in this part of Idaho for 127 years. Um, this is said to be one of the driest spots in the entire nation. But you know what's nice about practicing regenerative soil principles and regenerative agriculture on top of those soils is that when you do that, you have resilience. And that's the word we've been using a lot this year lately. Despite the fires, despite the drought, we have resilience. We actually did some numbers and we found out that we are running more cattle than we ever have. We found out that our hay crop is actually more than we've ever had. And what that means is our profitability is more than we've ever been able to make in a year. And this on the worst year in record. And it's because our foundation is in that equity right there underneath my feet, underneath their feet. They're the harvesters but they're building the equity, the capital of soil underneath their feet. And when you have that, you have resilience. And when you have that, you have hope. Thanks for watching.